Hey everyone, we're going to continue with our monster battle system logic. Uh, this video, I'm going to go step by step through the logic, I think. Um, we're going to follow it and trace it. I think that's the best way to run through it, because there's a lot of things going on, and I think if I just go bit by bit, that's the best way to teach this. So, let's see what happens. Here we go. Alright, first things first, we need to make some C++ classes. And it doesn't matter what IDE you use. IDE you use. First, you need to make yourself a new component. Call this Battle Component. This is just an actor component. We're going to want a couple of implementable events. We want a start turn. We want a run turn with an integer input. I called it in action choice. We want an AI selectability, and we want an AI run turn. Last, we're going to want a multicast delegate, declare dynamic multicast delegate, F turn ended. Put it down here as blueprint callable, blueprint assignable, F turn ended, turn ended. We're going to call that at the end of turns, and things will then run. Um, they're going to be bound to it, and then they're going to run as soon as that's broadcasted, called. Nothing's going on in the implementation file. You're going to want a game mode for the battle. I have a separate game mode. Let me find it. It's totally blank. This is my own custom game mode, but there's nothing going on. And then I inherit from it. At some point I'll have overworld stuff, so I wanted to have an overworld game mode and then a separate game mode for the battle map. In here, we're going to want an enum. This is our battle state. Make it an enum class blueprint type of uint8. We want start, player turn, enemy turn, one, and lost. In the game mode battle itself, we're going to want some more implementable events. We want a setup battle, a player turn, an enemy turn, a new round, a continue round, a check turn stack, and then we're going to want an enum itself, so make this a U property, edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write. This is our battle state enum, call it battle state or whatever you want, and set it start for default. Nothing in the implementation. Last, we need to have some abilities for the monsters to use. This is going to be a U object. It doesn't spawn in the world, it's not an actor. This is just something that they'll hold, that each monster will hold in an array. Above it, make another enum. This is an enum class blueprint type. I called it monster ability type. It's another U into 8. And in here, you can ignore speed buff and speed debuff for right now. I'll make another video specifically about buffs and debuffs. And just stick in none, damage, and heal. None might not actually be required. I just like to have that in there for the default monster ability so that it's set to none by default. In the monster ability, go ahead and give it a monster ability. Edit defaults only. Blueprint read write. Monster ability type. Ability type is the name of it. And set it to none as default. Then you want to have another property. Edit defaults only again. Blueprint read write. This is a float and this is going to be the modifier. Whatever this does, it's going to have a float modifier. There's nothing in the implementation again. Make sure for the battle component, also, that it's blueprintable. That's important. Once that's all compiled, come back to the editor. So we're going to want to make a blueprint of the game mode, the battle game mode. In a components folder, you're going to want to make a blueprint of the battle component. In an abilities folder, you want to make a monster ability parent class blueprint. Go to the parent monster class that we created in the previous video. And give yourself the battle component over here. Search for your battle component. And you want to do the blueprint battle component. Let's start with the game mode battle. Open that up. And let's follow the logic. Here's our setup battle event. On begin play, just call that. You could just begin play into this, but I like to have everything separated out into abstracted functions and events so that we have very specific names for everything. We're going to have a long sequence on setup battle. In the previous video, I showed how to load the enemy monster and load the friendly monster. I've just collapsed those into functions. These are identical to that previous video. 
If you want to see how that's done, watch the previous video and that shows you how to load your monsters with the stats from the overworld into the battle map. The next step is to set up UI. This is a separate function, so just make a function called setup UI. First in the setup UI, we get the player controller. I have an interface on my player controller so that I can just call get player controller battle and then it'll return it without having to cast. This is just a separate player controller that I've made for the battle map. There's no logic going on inside it yet. Go into a sequence. The first thing that we want to do is create that battle UI widget that I created in the previous video. Let's go take a look at it because there's a couple things here that we need to send in. Here's that UI we set up last time. We'll come back to this logic in a bit. Over here in our variables, we want to have the friendly monster, which is a BP monster variable the enemy monster, which is also a BP monster variable, and then we want the game mode battle, which is our BP game mode battle. Go ahead and make those three variables. We also want to make sure that each one is instance editable and expose on spawn. Expose on spawn allows them to appear here when we create the widget. Let me move my head out of the way so you can see the variables here. Go ahead and take the friendly monster, the enemy monster, and pass those in here at friendly monster and enemy monster. We got those variables when we loaded and we set those variables from when we spawned the actor for both enemy and for friendly. With those sent in, also grab self, the game mode itself, and pass that into the UI. From the return value, set it as a variable, call it battle widget. There is one thing that the player controller has it's not used currently, but I just gave it access to it, is the battle widget, which is of the WBP UI battle um, type. And then in the core over here in the game mode, I then take the player controller and I set the battle widget to this uh, return value here as well, so that the player controller has access to the UI eventually if I ever need it. We're then going to add it to the viewport. We're going to grab our player controller again, and set mode to UI only. Take that UI and pass it as the widget to focus. I then want to show the mouse cursor, so take the player controller again and look for set show mouse cursor and check that box. With the UI all set up now and added to the viewport, we now have to initialize some information in the UI. For the next step of the sequence, I have these two functions, initialize monster info and initialize monster info running, both for the friendly monster and the enemy monster. These are both running on the UI battle itself. So let's go over to the UI battle and check that out. Initialize monster info is a custom event I created on the UI. It brings in a boolean of enemy and it brings in a BP monster object reference. The first thing is a branch. We're gonna check if we're an enemy or not. This is how we're going to double check that these variables are set in the UI. If the game mode somehow fails to set these, we're doing a backup here. We're taking the monster and we're setting it as the enemy monster or the friendly monster based on this branch. We come up here and I've got a set text node for the enemy health. That's this in the upper right corner. We have a progress bar and we have a text, both of which are set to variables. I take the enemy health and I set the text. The text I'm setting to enemy monster, get the monster stats, get the stats off the monster stats component and break it. We take the health and we pass it down and we put it into the enemy health text to start with. The enemy health bar over here, we're gonna set percent. This time we're gonna take the health, convert it to a float. Take the max health, convert it to a float. Take the current health, divide it by the max health. Make sure these are floats, otherwise this won't work and we're gonna take that value and put it into the percent. A health bar reads from zero to one, so we don't need to um, multiply or make this into uh, between zero and 100. That's how we set up the enemy monster health information. We have both the text, the number, and the percent for the progress bar. For the friendly monster, we're gonna take our battle player panel, which is this in the lower left, and we're gonna do some stuff with it. I have a variable on the player panel called friendly monster of the BP monster object type. We can go check it over here, it's on the left here. Just make this variable, make it instance editable, and expose it on spawn again. It's of BP monster type. So we're going to set that. 
to the friendly monster that we have in our main UI. We're then going to call a function called initialize on the player panel. One more function. Let's go into it. Here we are on the player panel. Create a custom event called initialize. We're going to get that friendly monster, do a validated check on it. You can do that by dragging that up here, right click it, and go to convert to validated get. Off that friendly monster, you want to bind an event to on take any damage. That's an existing event. Bind event to on take any damage. So you don't need to make that. We're going to bind refresh UI to that event. Make a new custom event called refresh UI and link it up. Best way to do that is off of event, drag that red squiggly off of it and just search for custom event and add it. That way it'll create all this information. We're not using it, but it creates a proper event. We'll come back to refresh UI after we finish this path. So next, we want to set text to the monster name and the monster level. That's these guys right here, name and level. Both are variables. For the monster name, we're again going to take our friendly monster, get the monster stats component, get the monster stats off the component, break it, and drag the name down and just insert that text here. For the monster level, same thing, grab the level, text to integer, and pass it in. Next we want to set up the ability buttons. Those are these four things right here. I made the uniform grid panel a variable called battle ability buttons, which contains the buttons. I take that battle ability buttons and I get all children. Now in this struct, I've added abilities. Let's go take a look at that. Here's my monster stats component. And above that, here's my struct of monster stats. I've added this T array, T subclass of monster ability, and I've called it abilities. This is what's going to store each class of our abilities. With that now part of our monster stats, we can take that array, do a for each loop, get its index and use that to get the child out of the ability buttons. So these are going to match up. And we're going to set that button to visible, which reminds me, each of these buttons is collapsed by default. Once we've initialized all the buttons, we then come out of completed. We're going to get the game mode, run our interface call on that in order to get the game mode battle so we don't have to cast again, just make it an interface. Game mode battle comes out, we're going to set it so that we can keep it, save it as a variable, and then we're going to come over here. We're going to set our friendly health and our friendly health bar. This is separate because refresh UI is going to call this, just these. These are a part of initialization. This is going to be called on initialization and when we refresh the UI. This is identical to what we did in the enemy health. So go ahead and set text for friendly health and friendly health bar, set the percent. Drag off of our current health, the health stat, set that to friendly health right here so that's our number. And then for the percent for the health bar again, take the health and the max health, convert both of them to a float so that we get a proper percentage, an actual decimal here. Divide the current health by the max health and pass that in for the in percent. When we take any damage, refresh UI is called, which then runs this again and updates our current health text and our current health progress bar. The next logic on the player panel is the buttons themselves. Get the friendly monster, get the battle component off of it, and you remember that we created a run turn event. Off the game mode battle, get that battle state. We want to make sure that our battle state is player turn. We don't want to be able to push any of these buttons unless it's our turn. Make a branch for each button and send in this equal to player turn into each of those. Next, call run turn off the battle component for each one and set the in action choice. You remember we made that the variable. Here's that run turn again, just as an example. It's a const int in action choice. Make the first one one. Second one, two, then three, and then four for our four buttons. That's the logic for the player panel. We're done there. We come back out, 
to where we called initialize. We're done there. Let's take a look at construct for the UI battle. We want to grab the enemy monster and we want to do something similar. Grab bind event to on take any damage off the enemy monster off of event. Create a custom event, call it refresh UI again. And this refresh UI is going to come up here and execute the monster health information again. So this is the same thing as the friendly health. We're going to reset the text so that the number updates and we're going to reset the progress bar so that the progress bar updates to current health. Finally, off of construct, off of this bind of event, we're going to grab our battle text. That's this guy down here in the lower right. And we're going to set a variable in it, which is just the self, which is the battle UI. Let me open that and show you. Here's our battle text. Over here in the variables, I have a battle UI of the type WBP UI battle. This is also instance editable. Once we've sent our self in to that battle UI, we're done with the logic on our UI for the battle. And here we are back in game mode battle. We've just come out of our initialized monster info for both friendly monster and enemy monster. As you can see here, enemy is not checked for friendly monster. Enemy is checked for enemy monster. This alone, with that logic that we just ran through, will fully update the UI battle with the information. There's one more thing to do with the UI. Off of another pin, come down here, grab the battle widget, grab the UI battle text off the battle widget, grab the battle text off of the UI battle text itself. That's this right here, which is set to a variable. We're going to set text, and you can name it whatever you want. I said a wild placeholder appears. So that's it. That's the setup UI function. We're done setting up the UI. Everything's been initialized. We have our friendly health. We have our enemy health. We have our ability buttons all set up. We're good to go on the user interface. In the next video, we're going to initialize battle components. Until then, see you later.